Shin Godzilla, the greatest worst nightmare, as described by the director, is the 11th incarnation of Godzilla known for his rapid evolution. His five evolutionary forms are depicted in the movie, while eight distinct forms are referenced across various sources. All these forms will be discussed in today's video. The monster has debuted in the Crayon Shin-chan anime, but his true lethal debut was in the eponymous movie Shin Godzilla in 2016. This video will extensively explore the physiology and powers of Shin Godzilla and answer some interesting questions like, is Shin Godzilla immortal? How does he self-mutate? How does his internal cooling system work? And much more. So get your neurons working to unravel this monster's secrets. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Shin Godzilla? Let's quickly go through his origin story before diving into the intricacies of his physiology. So, Shin Godzilla is a totally different species of Godzilla, distinguished by the fact that he is not an ancient creature who was awakened by human activities. Rather, he is a marine creature related to the Paleozoic era marine reptiles. He was supposedly surrounded by nuclear waste dumped into the seabed in the 1950s and evolved into this monstrosity over the span of 60 years. The creature developed resistance to radioactivity and began to thrive on it by consuming nuclear waste. He spent his entire life underwater until his evolution allowed him to reach a shore. He still continued evolving until he developed limbs and began to walk upright. And now it's time to explore his evolutionary stages. The Physiology of Shin Godzilla's Evolution Debates broke out in the Japanese government when a mysterious red liquid leaked into the Tokyo Bay Aqualine. Huge clouds of steam erupted in Tokyo Bay and the water became boiling hot. The cause was suspected to be a volcanic eruption, but the possibility was ruled out. The real suspect of these activities was a never-seen-before monster whose presence was confirmed by the huge tail that emerged from the water. This is the first form of Shin Godzilla. Apart from this reddish tail and a part of his back covered in dorsal fins, Nothing much of Shin Godzilla's first form is visible throughout the film. However, the concept art presents the first form as a rotund tadpole. Japanese government called biologists for their expert opinions on the creature, but the biologists refused to give a definite conclusion without closer inspection. Debates arose around whether to exterminate this creature or capture him alive. Meanwhile, Shin Godzilla had already started moving towards the shore. He moved like a snake with auxiliary ambulation and reached populated areas through the river. He was observed to have gills and fin-like legs. The government believed that the fin-like legs would not be able to bear the creature's weight, hence he wouldn't come onto land. Emergency evacuations of the area were ordered as the creature wriggled through the bridges, boats and debris of the river. The evacuation notice was a little too late because Shin Godzilla had already mutated into his second form and began traveling onto land. Shin Godzilla's second form is light brown or a dim yellowish green color. He can't walk upright, although he has grown limbs, dominantly the hind legs. It's a quadrupedal, reptile-like form, with small, underdeveloped stumps in place of arms. His neck and head have grown exponentially, and he continues to slither like a snake at speeds of around 13 kilometers per hour, while completely leaning forward. His eyes are non-sentient, huge, and his mouth is always agape. His gills are also large and clearly visible. They hang from his neck and secrete the red liquid. His head resembles the head of an eel shark and his back has light brown dorsal plates. Clearly, he has begun to resemble Godzilla. The second form is capable of causing large-scale damage and can demolish buildings by exerting his weight upon them. The Japanese government had to declare a national emergency and deploy the self-defense forces to cease the city's ruin. After much slithering, Godzilla abruptly stopped, stood upright and sprouted arms from the underdeveloped stumps. He had now evolved into his third form. The assault helicopter deployed to take down Godzilla were ordered to retreat due to the presence of civilians in the attacking area, so Shin Godzilla then freely headed towards Tokyo Bay. Shin Godzilla's third form is double the size of his second form. The colour of his body changes yet again and takes the darker shades of red and brown. His dorsal plates are an off-white with blood-red coloration and his legs are more stretched out. His eyes are still emotionless like a fish but his mouth looks deadlier. He has sharp teeth and the blood-red lining on the sides of his mouth 
give him a burned, scarred look. His gills were no longer protruding or hanging from his neck, indicating that they were no longer much needed. Godzilla was not seen for some time, and was believed to have returned back into the ocean. A team of scholars and officials were convened to study the creature with available samples. His body fluids were analysed in a lab while the US had taken away all the remaining fluid samples. They predicted the possibility of more evolutions. Behavioural biologists observed no signs of intellect in the creature, which only seemed to move. The source of his energy was brainstormed. Oxygen conversion in the digestive tract was ruled out as inefficient, and nuclear fission was also ruled out as being too far-fetched, but certain changes in the radiation levels of the affected areas were observed. The path followed by Godzilla indicated an abrupt rise in the radiation levels, so nuclear fission was finally confirmed as the source of Shin Godzilla's energy. A representative of the American ambassador in Japan named Kyoko Ann Patterson collaborated with the team of intellectuals. She wanted to find a person in exchange for crucial information about the creature. Kyoko revealed a research conducted by a zoologist named Goro Maki who was studying this creature and had named him Gojira which meant incarnation of God. The American Department of Energy had then dubbed the monster as Godzilla, and the same name was used in Japan fourth. The research had theories about the origin of gods, which we have already covered at the start of this video. The team finally concluded that Godzilla had a nuclear reactor in his body, and the reason why he went back into the ocean was to cool himself. His fins work like heat vents and his blood assists in the cooling mechanism. The only way to defeat him was to cool him down completely, ending the nuclear fission and depriving him of energy. Soon Godzilla resurfaced in Sagami Bay, once again with a new look. Shin Godzilla had now evolved into his fourth form and was headed towards Tokyo. Shin Godzilla had once again doubled in size and resembled the past Godzilla designs more closely, especially the original Godzilla from 1954. His large eyes had now become small and beady, and his bumpy skin took on a black colour with red scales that resembled keloid scars. He still lacked eyelids, but had an anti-flash defensive membrane that would cover his eyes upon attack. This was his tallest form, with immensely muscular legs and a robust and unique tail covered in spiky fins. The tip of his tail is red and had a spare skeletal head. His chest has an axe-shaped sternum, and his mouth is full of large teeth, though it lacks a tongue. His jaw also unhinges and splits open while using the atomic breath. To stop Shin Godzilla from reaching Tokyo, the Prime Minister of Japan finally permits the use of all necessary weapons against the monster, but the missiles had no clear impact on its body. He was rained with incessant firepower, but nothing worked against him. The fourth form of Shin Godzilla had incredible self-preservation ability. He was a perfect organism, surpassing man. His body glowed red in the dark and then turned to purple while while using the atomic breath, which set the city ablaze. After this, Godzilla went into a state of hibernation and the officials undertook him for study. The study concluded with some interesting and threatening facts. First, it found that Godzilla had gone into a state of hibernation for approximately 15 days due to excessive use of energy. Secondly, Godzilla's cells can convert air and water into radioactive isotopes to harness energy for himself. Third, due to his healing ability, pieces of Godzilla Godzilla's skin can evolve and live on their own. This meant that rapidly evolving creatures could overrun the Earth if Godzilla was not stopped. The Japanese government launched an operation to inject blood coagulants into Godzilla after immobilizing him. With a series of tactical attacks, the operation succeeded and Godzilla was frozen in his place. Even still, the frozen monster kept on evolving. On the spare head at the tip of his tail, multiple humanoid skeletons were seen emerging and reaching out towards the sky. This is the fifth form of in Godzilla. These skeletons had Godzilla's dorsal plates on their back and lacked eyes, but the concept art had designed them with eyes. They also had a large hole in their chest. Shin Godzilla, if he was not immobilized, would have evolved into a more human form to adapt and infiltrate his environment. It may have been a scarier form as it could easily walk alongside humanity and infect others. According to the Art of Shin Godzilla book, the fifth form was proposed to have flight capabilities and the ability of self-division. He could have 
shrunk in size and formed a legion of those humanoid skeletons. These five forms of Shin Godzilla are majorly known, but there are three more to mention. In his sixth form, Shin Godzilla would have reached self-energy production and freed himself from the dependency on air and water for survival. He would have had limitless nuclear fission capabilities, and then he would have turned into a Lovecraftian entity with only fleshy mass and no organs. Afterwards, he would have flown into space to invade other planets. In the seventh form, Shin Godzilla would have evolved into a hive mind, aware of everything in his surroundings. He would have had resistance to all types of harsh environments for survival. Most interestingly, he could have synthesized different elements out of nothing. He could even contain a small universe within his body. In the final eighth form, he would have become a literal god, an immortal being who has transcended the boundaries of physical laws. He would have been the omniscient being of the small universe within him. He would be the ultimate stage of life. In what ways can Shin Godzilla self-mutate? Shin Godzilla possesses eight times the genetic information present in human beings. Shin Godzilla mutates at a surprising pace and undergoes multiple changes throughout the duration of the film. This is because he can mutate his DNA at will to adapt to any situation. He started out as a prehistoric sea creature who fed on nuclear waste and kept on evolving into a monstrous creature. To walk on land, he mutated to develop limbs. He then improved his capabilities by mutating into his third form, becoming bipedal and developing arms. He mutated once again into his fourth form, which had a heavily armored skin. After being attacked, he adapted his physiology to use his nuclear energy as a weapon and shoot lasers. While hibernating also, he underwent adaptations and became able to shoot the atomic breath from the tip of his tail. Even while being frozen, Shin Godzilla could mutate himself into a fifth form, which could have produced an army of humanoid skeletons. Godzilla's self-mutation ability is so unique that he could have even evolved himself into an immortal and omniscient entity, showcasing a most brilliant range of mutation. How does Shin Godzilla utilize the atomic energy he generates as a weapon? Shin Godzilla has an internal nuclear system. This nuclear system is central to the functioning of his atomic energy weapon. It's a set of organs that can absorb and store nuclear radiation to be utilized later. Godzilla has been able to feed on nuclear material in his early forms and harness it for his survival. Godzilla's organs make possible the controlled nuclear fission of unknown radioactive elements. Chain reactions produce a significant amount of heat, which Godzilla suppresses with his blood that acts as a coolant for him. His dorsal plates also assist in cooling his body by acting as an energy dissipation system. He has also created his very own radioactive isotope in his body to carry out these fissions. By concentrating this energy, Shin Godzilla shoots a stream of fire that can set entire city blocks ablaze at high speed. When this energy is focused further into a narrower beam, it becomes becomes purple, slicing through building. Shin Godzilla can also redirect his atomic energy. With this ability, he created variations of his weapon, like the dorsal plate beams and the tail beams. In Godzilla vs Evangelion, the real 4D, Godzilla was seen absorbing different kinds of energy to power himself up as King Ghidorah does for his gravity beams, and then shooting them as a supercharged atomic breath at the latter. How does Shin Godzilla's tail beam differ from his dorsal plate beams in terms of functionality? Shin Godzilla didn't showcase any beam attack abilities until he was in his fourth form. Even then, he remained quite negligent to assault missiles. His beam attacks were first seen in action when a couple of MOP-2 bombs hit him and finally drew blood from his incredibly tough skin. His dorsal plates glowed red and quickly took the purple shades and became extremely bright. First shot his atomic laser attack from his mouth in a single beam, then switched to dorsal plates to shoot multiple beams at the same time. He again shot the beam from his mouth after ceasing the dorsal plate beam. His dorsal plate beams were again used when he woke up from his hibernation. When he was constantly attacked on his back, he adapted his dorsal beams to be shot from his tail, which shot a singular beam and was paired with his atomic breath attack. 
Superficially, these attacks may seem similar, but they have a slight difference in their functionality. His dorsal plate beams are shot like a salvo of atomic lasers, which can bring down multiple targets in different directions at the same time. But this attack cannot be used simultaneously with his atomic breath and lacks flexible directionality. Unlike the dorsal plate beams, the tail beam can be shot at the same time with his atomic breath. We can observe the nuclear energy traversing from his spine to the tip of his tail, where it's finally discharged as a beam shot from the mouth of the spare head. His tail is more flexible and can be swirled in different directions for pinpoint accuracy. One major observation between the dorsal plate beams and the tail beams is that the latter most probably requires lesser energy intake. Shin Godzilla had to initially go into hibernation after using the dorsal plate beams for the first time. This was because he had exhausted his energy with that attack, but this time he was able to use the beams without requiring a resting period suggesting that he had also adapted to consume less energy during a What role do Godzilla's blood and dorsal fins play in his internal cooling system? As we've already established, Shin Godzilla has a nuclear reactor in his body to meet his energy demands. His body carries out nuclear fission, a type of chemical reaction that releases a huge amount of energy in the form of heat and radiation. A cooling system becomes necessary in such a case to prevent damage from heat. In the case of Shin Godzilla, his blood acts as the necessary coolant. A coolant is a liquid that runs through a reactor and extracts heat from the reactor to transfer it to ambient air water. If we look closely at Shin Godzilla's body, we find it to be very non-uniform and full of patches of deep red colour. This red pigmentation is most likely the colour of his blood visible on his skin. If those areas of blood were covered with his dark and thick skin, Godzilla would have faced difficulty in cooling his radioactive body. His blood extracts heat from his body and dissipates it into the air from those red blood Shin Godzilla's blood has a high boiling point Point, which is excellent for endothermic reactions and the heat dissipation process. The blood surrounds his biological nuclear reactor for the cooling process and the blood vessels go around the whole body while taking down the temperature and then come back again. His spinal column and the area near the base of his brain are the most open and critical in process. His abdomen and upper torso pockets also have similar patches which assist in his internal cooling system. Besides the blood, the dorsal fins of Shin Godzilla also play a vital role in cooling down his body, much like in a similar fashion that's observed in dinosaurs. The dorsal fins increase the surface area of Shin Godzilla and enhance the radiation effect, along with serving the heat dissipation function on the back. What challenges did Shin Godzilla face when he was hit by the massive Ordnance Penetrator Bomb, and how did it affect him? The massive Ordnance Penetrator, or MOP Bomb, is an airdropped nuclear bunker-busting bomb used by the United States Air Force. At the time of Shin Godzilla, it was the most powerful bomb in existence. The MOP 2 model was dropped on Shin Godzilla when all the firepower of Japan had failed against the beast. US military stepped in and informed the Japanese Prime Minister that they had sent out the B-2 Spirit Stealth bomber aircraft with the mops to kill Godzilla. The action was carried out at night. While previously all the missiles had been bouncing off of Godzilla's skin, the two mops dropped on Godzilla managed to pierce through the skin and explode from the inside. Shin Godzilla had to suffer a large amount of blood loss and he also lost one of his dorsal plates during the attack. The aircrafts kept bombing Godzilla with the mops several more times. Despite the bombs containing massive explosive power, Godzilla's body endured the damage and managed to contain the explosive might that could have easily wiped out several city block. Godzilla didn't hold himself back against the attack and shot his atomic breath which exploded one of the stealth bomber aircraft. The remaining aircraft circled in from behind for payback and dropped four mops, but Shin Godzilla blasted them in mid-air with his dorsal plate beams before the bombs could reach him. The bombs also destroyed the remaining aircraft. A mop bomb weighs about 30,000 pounds and reaches a terminal velocity that breaks the sound barrier upon being dropped. It's made of ferro-cobalt alloy which ensures that it digs through the ground instead of detonating upon first impact. With such a mechanism, the mop bombs impressively pierce Godzilla's body and internally injure him. Godzilla was clearly antagonised by these attacks, otherwise he wouldn't have acted so violently and set the city ablaze when he had been clearly indifferent during previous attacks.
Exploring the vulnerabilities in Shin Godzilla's formidable physiology. Shin Godzilla seems pretty formidable, especially with the possibility of his immortal and omniscient eighth form. But still, Shin Godzilla has certain weaknesses and vulnerabilities like every other monster in this universe. Shin Godzilla's movements are sluggish and slow, and that makes him an easy target. His second form used to travel at a speed of 13 kilometers per hour, and his other forms also take a long time for traversing. His arms are also also incredibly short in comparison to his body size and are much like a vestigial organ. Owing to this, Shin Godzilla faces difficulty in getting back on his feet after being toppled over. His third form was also unable to withstand the heat generated in his body by nuclear fission. His body was generating heat at such a great intensity that it even distorted the air around him and he had to return to the ocean to cool down his overheated body. However, he overcame this vulnerability in his fourth form, but this form was not limitless either. As discussed earlier, the mop bombs were able to damage his body. He also becomes vulnerable if his nuclear energy reserves get depleted, since he enters into a state of suspended animation thereafter. Clearly, he only has a limited amount of energy that rapidly gets depleted when he uses the atomic breath and other beam attacks. He remains in hibernation for about 15 days in order to replenish his energy. This weakness was crucial to the Japanese government's victory in successfully carrying out Operation Yashiori, which caused Shin Godzilla to freeze. The nuclear energy, which is sent to Shin Godzilla's powers also became his major vulnerability. A blood coagulation drug was produced to rapidly cool Godzilla's blood, which may eventually immobilize him. All his other vulnerabilities added up and Godzilla was successfully captivated with a series of attacks. The blood coagulant was injected and it interfered with his blood flow. Thermal control of his internal nuclear reactor was interrupted, and since there was no blood flow, no more nuclear reactions were carried out in the body and he was forced to freeze solid. How does Shin Godzilla replenish his atomic energy and what triggers this process? Shin Godzilla carries out nuclear fission on an undescribed element to generate energy. A nuclear fission reaction is triggered when a neutron collides with certain large atoms. These large atoms become unstable and fission into smaller atoms and that results in the release of energy and more neutrons, which then triggers a chain reaction. These chain reactions need to be controlled to prevent an explosion. In man-made nuclear reactors, absorber rods are used to control the excess neutrons. We've seen that the third form of Shin Godzilla had to rush to the ocean to cool down his overheated body. This implies that his internal nuclear system hadn't evolved quickly enough to keep a check on the amount of energy being generated within himself. After he retreated back to the ocean, he must have evolved a system similar to those absorber rods within his body to have a greater control of the chain reaction. He then returned back in his evolved fourth form, which also used his blood as a coolant. He must have evolved emergency shutdown rods as used in man-made nuclear reactors, which are deployed for reactor trips in case of unstable nuclear fission at an alarming scale. Such a complex mechanism also has a problem known as xenon poisoning. An isotope of xenon usually forms inside nuclear reactors and consumes the available neutrons, which ceases the energy production. This is perhaps what happens when Shin Godzilla used his atomic beams. He underwent a reactor trip and the xenon poisoning induced a coma-like state, but his internal reactors dealt with it and began working again, implying that he could also store a level of nuclear energy. Is Shin Godzilla immortal? We've discussed the unbelievable evolutionary power of Shin Godzilla and his eight different forms, alongside his durability and formidable powers. This poses the question of whether Shin Godzilla is immortal. Shin Godzilla is, first and foremost, an animal, and all animals have an unexplainable natural instinct to survive. Hence, every time something tries to kill him, his body adapts to it and withstands the grave conditions. Every time he was predicted to be unable to do something, he mutated and proved those predictions wrong. Constant mutations have made him incredibly durable. Shin Godzilla cannot die, and it was canonically cleared that he can only be contained. Although he can be harmed, but every instance of inflicting a wound on him triggers a mutation and rapidly adapts him to the cause of harm. Thus, no harm has come close to killing him, and this practically renders him immortal. Marvelous verdict. Shin Godzilla is a frightening incarnation of Godzilla who is in constant pain. Shin Godzilla is able to evolve from a mutant aquatic creature to the level of a Lovecraftian immortal god, which makes him the most terrific and horrific creature. Even though we weren't able to witness all of his forms in action, he has succeeded in leaving an impactful lasting impression upon our minds. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.